Good afternoon to all and welcome to today's webinar hosted by ISF College of Pharmacy in collaboration with Chaitanya Vikas Yoga and Nature Care Center Harvard Karnataka. The topic of today's webinar is Herbal Drugs and Business Opportunities. Of, and this is very well suited for the pharma students and uh, who are doing, who wants to do something in the uh, natural products and those who wants to become a herbal preneur. Yeah, it's a new term, herbal preneur. First of all, ISF College of Pharmacy would like to give big thanks to Chaitanya Vikas Yoga and Nature Care Center for giving this opportunity for the conduction of this webinar. Respected dignities and participant, my name is Dr. Alok Sharma and I am working as a professor of pharmacognosy at ISF College of Pharmacy Moga. The college is situated in Moga, Punjab and running all pharmacy courses. ISFCP is one of the leading pharmacy college of Northern India and it's a NAC accredited A grade college and recently it has secured 32 rank in NIRF 2020 Pharma category. College of ISF College of Pharmacy is categorized as Band A Institute in the category of Self Finance Institute in Atal Ranking of Institution on Innovation Achievement 2020. Before, without further ado, I would like to add something. Presently, in an era of rapid advanced tech, science and technology, there is a tendency to ignore traditional value and knowledge as well as traditional medicine at large. Although the current pandemic or COVID era offer and offering a great opportunity for screening of active compounds from the medicinal plant or herbs, why should we aware of traditional knowledge in an attempt to discover drugs derived from herbal medicine. These herbal drugs are an integral component of alternative medical care. And as we know that India has a rich wealth of medicinal plants and the potential to accept the challenges to meeting the global demand for them. Ayurveda, naturopathy, Yunani and Siddha and folk medicine are the major healthcare system in Indian society. And the market of herbal drugs has grown at an impressive rate due to a global reappearance in traditional and alternative healthcare system. And therefore, medicinal plants have great economic importance. Hence, today's webinar is expected to explore the current opportunities in herbal drug. For this opportunity, we have a mentor a teacher, a scientist, Dr. S. Badami. He is MPharm and PhD by qualification and a rank holder student throughout pharmacy career. He is having 25 years of teaching experience in several pharmacy college and four years in industry, as industrial experience. He is having more than 100 publication and got research grants of worth one crore from the various government funding agency. Dr. Badami guided 10 PhD students and 25 former students. Beside Dr. Badami is writer. He has written various articles in newspaper. He is also working as an environmentalist and creating awareness against pollution by talks. He has developed more than 25 herbal formulation and currently working as managing director of Chaitanya Vikas Natural Dharwar Karnataka. So without more delay, I would like to invite Dr. Badami for sharing his expertise on today's webinar. Over to Dr. Badami. Yes. Good afternoon, all of you. Thank you very much, Dr. Alok, for giving me an opportunity to share some of my ideas with your students and stop. Uh, this, I have heard about Moga College. It is well established and the growth and all, I am very happy. A lot of research work is going on and 
through this seminar the it may be used very useful to the students i prefer natural lifestyle overall throughout the life as our body is natural we should use only the naturals not any chemicals because it is against our body so always i prefer the naturals herbals are a part of the naturals so i would like to deliver a talk on herbal drugs and business opportunities the in this picture there was a time magazine paper cutting i have shown i am showing you times magazine in november 1994 issue carried an article the herbal medicine boom means the boom for the herbal medicine has be has was started during 1994 itself or before even before that it is not a new boom and we will uh, through this lecture let us see why the boom was started what are the reasons for it why people are behind the herbal drugs is there any scope further also or is it going to become down all these aspects we will be seeing today india is called as the botanical garden of the world the reason is a large number of medicinal plants are available in india compared to any other country we are having a advantageous stage the so it is rightly said that it is the botanical garden of the world we need to utilize that and it is also said that india is sitting on a gold mine of well recorded and well practiced knowledge of traditional herbal medicine see it is the gold mine we are not utilizing it so there is a need for all of us to join hands and try to make india richer richer and richer by utilizing using this resources when britishers came to india their aim was to suppress the traditional knowledge whatever was available in india so ayurveda was a part of our tradition so they suppressed that they said all Ayur ayurveda is unscientific they said the ayurvedic doctors they called them as quacks so it is really a pity they have not seen the science in the ayurveda and they curbed the development of ayurveda during the 200 years of their rule so led and because of that our people neglected ayurveda and its scientific nature and later on the governments who were as ruled us for about last 70 years they also didn't give, give any importance to ayurveda that was the reason ayurveda took the back seat and people preferred all the western medicine only then again why it is coming back why ayurveda is coming back why herbal medicine is coming back we will see the reason india has produced a highly respectable healthcare system it is called as ayurveda it might have taken over 5000 years but the west has finally woken up to the possibilities of herbal medicines this is the good thing what we are seeing there are lot of paper cuttings here ayurveda goes global see today everywhere throughout the world everywhere people want ayurvedic medicines they want to follow ayurveda vaccines existed in ayurveda too see we have not researched ayurveda that is the reason we we are back way to get rid illness forever if you follow ayurveda illness will be forever will be get rid of ayurvedic center opens in moscow see today moscow in russia germany uk us japan in almost all the countries have ayurvedic medical colleges now so it it shows the interest in the foreign countries and today if you go to ayur ayurveda shala kotakal kerala you find 30% german patients why so many people from germany coming to the that kotakal ayurveda shala the reason is people are interested in ayurveda people are interested in herbs 
and today the top selling drug in india is liu 52 so that again indicates herbal drugs are getting more and more popular if you go to bang any metro cities bangalore delhi everywhere ayurvedic hospitals are more nowadays and see so let us see some of the some history behind it up to 1980 herbs were studied in almost all the colleges and all countries and in the name of botany or herbology or what ayurveda whatever it may be people were studied studying ayurveda the herbs up to 1980 up to 80 to 200 1980 to 2000 the herbs became out of syllabus what is the reason because people were interested in modern allopathy so what is the use of studying this so they removed all that from the syllabus but at 2000 onwards again herbs were reintroduced and people felt that chemistry equal to pollution we did not have to study chemistry we did not have to prepare any synthetic chemical as a drug or whatever it may be it pollutes so let us not study chemistry better to study herbs botany and all so in indian pharmacopoeia if you see in 1956 herbs were there lot of herbs were there in the pharmacopoeia 66 number of herbs reduced in 85 no herbs almost zero uh, but in 1996, few herbs were again introduced. In 2007, lot of herbs were introduced. And Indian herbal pharmacopoeia is also released. See the change. Once it was out of syllabus, not, and today again it was introduced. What is the reason? Why this change? We'll see that. Between not only Indian pharmacopoeia, Indian herbal pharmacopoeia, today, Herbal pharmacopoeia of UK, Japan, Germany, lot of our countries have Indian herbal pharmacopoeia. And why Indian pharmacopoeia introduced more herbs? The reason is British pharmacopoeia introduced many herbs in its pharmacopoeia. So when the others are doing, why not us? We, if we don't do it, it, it gives a wrong message. That is the reason the government has shown interest. See, these are the herbs which are introduced under British form in British pharmacopoeia. So that is the reason the herbs came back in Indian herbal pharmacopoeia also. also. In 2010 itself, the global market was worth dollar 180 billion a year, and Ayurveda about half of that. About 1,400 species of medicinal plants were regularly traded in USA. In those days and now also. Herbal sales increased dramatically in the mainstream US markets by 101% from May 97 to 98. And in 1990 itself, the Americans made an estimated 425 million visits to alternate health practitioners more than they made to primary care practitioners, physicians. See, 1990, 20 years back, Americans were visiting alternate health practitioners more than the allopaths. The trend has continued and today's statistics is very high. In 1992 itself, the NIH National Institute of Health in the US, they granted $3 million per year for alternative medicines, research on alternative medicines, meditation, massage, vitamin therapy and herbal therapy. See, this all indicates that the trend has started long back and it is continuing. And if we don't utilize this trend, we will be getting behind. It is our duty to uplift herbal medicine today. The current global market is growing annually at the rate of 10 to 15%. And in that, European share is nearly half of the total. And the number one herbal trade consumer, world consumer is Japan. Second one is Hong Kong. Third one is Germany. In Japan, from 1974 to 79, for five years, herbal sales was 15 times more compared to the allopathic 
is only 2.6 percent increase. See, 15-fold increase was seen during 1974 to 79. So, so about nearly about 30 years to 40 years back, the, the trend has started. See, this is the reason Japanese are live longer. There more there are more hundred centurions in Japan compared to any other country. The reason is they have they changed themselves. They pre started preferring medicinal plants. So they as and so the survival rate is also more for them. In China also, in 95 itself, one third of their drug market belonged to the herbal medicine. So in Malaysia also, the herbal drug industry is going at a rate of 20%. And in the medicinal plants trade, who should be the leader? India or China? China exports 120,000 tons per annum. In, it was exporting 2010 and it is increasing now and Indian value during 2010 was 32,000 tons. See, we are far, far behind. We are not even one third of the China's exports. Why? China took a lot of interest in the herbal medicine. So they, they have developed. Who should be the leader? India versus others. Out of 100 medicinal plants presently available in, in trade, 70 are available in India. 30 in China. See, they are not even half in terms of resources. China is a very big country, but still they don't get the medicinal plants. We have ours, India, we have lot of, lot, lots of medicinal plants are available around us, but we are not looking at them. We are not utilizing them. China utilizes them properly. So it is government support is also there in China. In India, government support is also not there. So that is the reason we are lagging behind. The another reason for lagging behind is the, the standardization. Standardization and research we are lagging behind. That is the reason. Though more number of medicinal plants are available, we are not utilizing them properly. Here, here is another report. Global trade in medicinal plants is growing. This report is from Thiruvananthapuram 2005 report. Kerala is number one in medicinal plants trade in India. Kerala is a small country, very small state, but medical medicinal plant sales wise, they are the top. And herbal drugs sales will be growing and it may reach 5 trillion by 2050. See that much scope is there, each and every herb growing in your yard may be of value if you take interest otherwise no the today more than 95 percent of the poor countries and developing countries people are using herbs and in america and europe also one third of the people are using herbs and more than 25 percent of modern drugs are of botanical origin so because of this herbs are having very high value today traditional growth it is select 2009 to 10 picture see the blue one is more than 10 percent growth see blue is only more here so it indicates that in almost throughout the world the herbal drugs are preferred right now Moringa, the annual Moringa sales is dollar six billion. Only one plant, I'm giving an example. 1.3 million tons of Moringa is exported. And see one plant, so much of scope. So many plants, nearly more than 47,000 plants are available in India. And we, if we utilize them, if we do research and all, definitely we have very bright future. I request all the students to take interest in herbs. Ginseng is the star in herbal dietary supplements. Everybody wants to take ginseng. So its sales is increasing. The picture I am giving is 2006 to 10. The reason I have selected old 
values 2006 to 10 the reason is it has started the trend of popularity of herbal drugs started long before that was the reason i have taken the old values only the today's trend is still high and if if i show the only the recent pictures you may consider that now it is recent trend it may fall again you may feel but the trend has started for 40 years back in asia i will show you the throughout the world what is the trend i will show you in the coming pictures china japan taiwan south korea and india comprises asia specific countries see the trend 2006 to 10 is increasing australia see australia and new zealand the trend is increasing nowhere it is decreased eastern europe russia poland ukraine serbia hungary the trend is very high increase actually here and western europe germany italy france spain these countries also it is increasing latin america brazil mexico argentina colombia venezuela in these countries also the trend is very high again and middle east and africa israel nigeria egypt south south africa saudi arabia these countries also it is increasing and north america america and us and canada see again the trend is increasing so this everywhere throughout the world in each and every country the herbal drugs are more popular people want to purchase them and today mainstream doctors doctors who are practicing allopathy they have also started writing herb, herbs and dietary modification they have started suggesting they have started suggesting yoga they have started suggesting naturopathy see like this the trend is changing tomorrow the whole world will be full of medicinal plant uses for their illnesses so allopaths started worrying about their future what is going on here these people were backside we put them back but they are coming back what is the reason the reason is the people have changed not and there is a global interest what what interest people are having is it ayurveda no is it herbal medicine no people are more interested in nutraceuticals and dietary supplements so that is the reason lot of large number of plants are being used in nutraceutical and dietary supplements and people are preferring to consume them and since ayurveda is ours we have not we are not doing much research so ayurveda growth is less compared to nutraceuticals similarly herbal medicine because of the research lack lacking in research these two fields are not growing only the nutraceutical area it is growing much see these are the these were the top selling herbs in the us market in 2003 hmm. the, it, see here in there are 10 plants hardly one or two are in indian plants all of foreign plants only the see we india is rich in medicinal plants but we are lacking research that is the reason our plants are not shown here it is the their plants only it is list contains the reason is why only these 10 plants are sold more the reason is extensive validation on efficacy and safety standardization both chemical standardization and biological standardization they are over randomized double blind placebo controlled clinical trials have been done on these plants and a large number of publications are available on these plants this is the reason the these 10 plants are more in the market more demand in the market and if we work on, on indian plants more and more probably the demand for our plants also will definitely grow Totally 47,000 plant species are reported in India. Out of them, 7,500 are believed to be of medicinal value. Out of them, 800 species are reported to be in commercial use. That means hardly 1.7% of the our resources we are using. 
and 240 species are in good quantities less than 150 species have been standardized as per international norms till date that means only 0.3% of the our herbal herbs we have standardized whereas this value for china is 99% see the difference china makes use of school children also to standardize their herbs we don't allow our school children to do any research work because they are small it is not like that we even we can utilize the school children for research we only thing is we need to train them properly if we train them they can do miracles that but that trend is not there in india so we are lagging behind the reason is our plants are not standardized that is the reason we are lagging behind this work we need to take up more and more and we need to increase this value from 0.3% to at least around 10% during the next around 2 3 years and so that if the this standardization is over then the people will believe us and they start purchasing our herbal formulations and there are some negative propaganda is also there people say that ayurvedic products contain steroids this is a wrong propaganda we should not believe because all plants contain natural steroids all plants the value value volume the amount may be different but all the plants contain natural steroids if you check for steroidal content definitely you will get the positive so that doesn't mean that ayurvedic products have been added steroids added steroids means the chemical steroids they are not being added and if somebody is doing means we should catch them why to blame ayurveda for all ayurvedic products that is not required we need not have to so uh, worry about this we should be happy to take the take the ayurvedic products similarly the the adulteration is more in ayurvedic products because the medicinal plants business is in the hands of the illiterate people instead of sarpaganda they have mixed with catharanthus roseus and they are selling it because the they are they are illiterate people they want only money whereas we people are educated after b farm or m farm you should enter into herbal medicinal trade so if you try to export your medicinal plants to other countries so you as an educated you may not do this so the people start believing us and the medicinal plant sales will grow up and if we adulterate and spoil the market then it is a last to our nation only last to us only and what we are selling today is only the fresh plants or dried plants and the extracts standardized extracts and phyto medicines we are not selling they are very costly if you sell instead of fresh plants if you sell dried plants the cost will increase 30 times and instead of dried plants if you sell extracts again the cost will be increased another 30 times so it will be 30 30 30 like that it will be a very huge cost if you go for phyto medicines whereas we people are not doing that we are happy only in fresh and dried plants because more of the illiterate people they don't know other parts other things so they are just selling fresh plants or dried plants china is taking our plants and they make the standardized extracts or phyto medicines and they sell so they earn more money than us compared it's because they 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 have standardized and they have the techniques we need we need to fo follow them and we need to, to take interest in the herbal drug research and today for anti malaria again like malarium falciparum artemisin is the only drug available in the world why we don't have something like this because our we have not we are we are we are not interested much in the herbal medicines and we have not worked like china salicinal salicinal from salesia is the best anti diabetic drug 
and sesamin is best for anti obesity and even for for diabetes where uh, these drugs are produced in huge quantities in china japan and those countries whereas we should go for phytomedicine that means we need not have to export only the sesame seeds we need to isolate sesame and then send it so we get instead sesame seeds is hardly 100 rupees per kg whereas sesame is 40000 rupees per kg see the difference so if we involved in this type of research then only we will be grow similarly there is curcumin all of us have seen curcumin this curcumin is water insoluble whereas thailand they have made a soluble curcumin the solubility is 150 times more so people are purchasing them this is the only company making soluble curcumin in the world so they are minting money because of the research they are growing so, so similarly we should involve in research then only we can grow see there are a lot of opportunities while going on the road side of any village you get many plants which if you take a leaf and smell it you may get very good smell that means it has violet volatile oil who has to isolate the volatile oil we are all pharmacists we have studied all this then we know we are not doing it in the in olden india even in houses people used to isolate the volatile oils the equipment was there i have seen in many museums the volatile oils are very costly so we should, we can involve in the sale of volatile oils we should do that and you see the difference between the raw material cost and the finished products the us dollar 5 per kg for artica diosic dioka whereas the finished product is 1500 See three hundred times more. I Nigella Sativa, there only one dollar per kg. Finished product is thirty dollar per kg. Thirty times increase. And similarly, Cucurbita Maximo, the raw material is only point five dollar per kg, whereas the finished product is two thousand dollars per kg. Why can't we involve in this? Melissa Office Nerit. only 1 dollar per kg finished product is 12000 per kg see the difference 12000 times the cost is increased so we should always be interested in selling the finished products not the raw materials and i feel the government should ban the ban the sale of the raw materials from india then then only people will be interested in finding finding out the technology for the finished products and they will try try to sell the finished products trigonella that is methi 1 and 1/2 dollar per kg whereas the finished product is 1000 dollar per kg lavendula 0.5 dollar per kg raw material finished product is 2000 similarly there are two more examples see in the case of colchicum the raw material is almost zero because it is a weed and finished product is 25000 dollar per kg see the beauty of it beauty of herbs in this slide you can see that hypericum the raw material cost is zero that because it is a weed it is available almost freely and it is toxic But nobody uses them it is available plenty freely and finished product is hypericin it is US dollar 1500 lakhs per kg this is the see why it is so costly because it is an antidepressant drug throughout the world people more and more people are suffering from depression so and this is safer drug better drug so people are using it and for regular consumption they are using it so it is very costly the percentage of hypericin also is very very low in the hypericum species whereas it is a again india is not producing hypericin other countries are making it so we should do we should involve in this type of research another two other examples i am giving you here and 
the difference the cost of herbs versus conventional drugs cost of herbs is also very less compared to the equivalent drugs available in allopathy see the see the st john's wort 100 capsules dollar 11 dollar only whereas prozac is 30 capsule 100 dollars see the cost is too high in case of allopathic drugs you can see all the examples there are many examples i am giving you here the herbal drugs are very very cheap compared to the more modern medicines <coughs> see some more examples so herbal drugs can serve the purpose can serve the poor also so that is the reason we and they give the same effect effect is same no toxicity cheap what what advantages you need now let us see why herbal drugs are popular again there are two reasons you may be wondering uh, seeing this slide one is drugs means what allopathic drugs not the ayurveda and second one is diseases both two d's are responsible for the for the growth of herbal drugs two d's one is drugs other one is diseases i diseases what type of diseases diseases due to lifestyle change those diseases are responsible for the growth of herbal drugs we will uh, let us discuss these two if we if we want to bring a new drug into the market it costs dollar 800 to 1000 million dollars see the amount 800 to 1000 million dollars it costs and it takes 10 to 15 to 17 years to bring a drug to the market whereas if you do it on herbs it doesn't take this much of period and it doesn't cost that much so many thousand millions it doesn't cost so if we are interested we can make the world indianize the globe we can we can indianize the globe through ayurveda actually it is possible purity of drugs impurity profile we call it drug purity for most of the drugs was around 96 percent in 1960s it was increased to 99 percent in 90s 99.9 percent .9 in 2010 along with identification of impurities and their toxicities why it was increased while when 96 percent people were taking it four percent impurities today they don't want even 0.1 percent of impurities because the allopathy considers the impurities as bad for health they may be carcinogenic so that is the reason we should make it pure so that means the carcinogens are, are the impurities are removed from the her, from the product allopathic drug but here not only impurities the drug itself may have toxic and side effects the drug itself it may be pure but what is the use of it if it is having toxic and side effects so that is what is happening all the allopathic drugs are having one or the other side effects and toxic effects so people don't want to take risk they want only the safest drugs and allopathy can treat only 30 percent of diseases for remaining 70 percent of diseases we have to depend on herbal drugs and while if if for those diseases if we go to an allopath he will be experimenting on us so we may get cure or not no cure but definitely we will be suffering due to the side effects so that is the reason people don't want to take the risk and see the number of drugs which were recalled 2012 291 13 315 2014 370 337 see why so many drugs are recalled when we call them as a drug, they should be safe. When they, they come to know about their toxicity later on, not immediate, the companies without doing much work they are introducing. 
because they, they don't they want profits so this is the reason the when you they don't know this are they themselves companies they themselves don't know the side effects and toxic effects how come a common man knows about it why you are recalling every year such a big number the reason is they are toxic if, since they are toxic if the drug companies if you go and ask them they will say today if i introduce a drug it may be recalled in 3 months so that is the trend today and it is very very difficult to make a successful drugs in the market for a long period it is very very difficult any to introduce any any antibiotic in 3 months the microorganisms get resistance to that so it is very difficult to take back within 3 months so if the companies are not interested much in the in the allopathic medicines nowadays whereas they want in they were interested more in the herbal drugs i give you some of the 10 worst drug recalls in the history of the fda see this is fenfluramine recalled in 97 after 24 years in the market so during those 24 years the people have suffered after consuming it nobody was knowing it so only after 24 years it was recalled so similarly diethyl stilbestrol recalled in 1975 after 37 years in the market so for the 37 years people consumed it and suffered because of its side effects so this is the type of the research which is going on right now we want only the safest drugs and so allopathic drugs may not be so safe serivastatin 2001 after 4 years it was recalled and damages were dollar 1.2 billion dollars they have paid rofecoxib after 5 years in the market financial damage was dollar 6 billion mark company's product similarly waldecoxib it is recalled in 2005 it causes heart attack and stroke see you are taking for some purpose a drug but it causes heart attack so you die Now, what is the use of such drugs we need to think proglitazone it was recalled in 2000 after it because it was connected to hepatitis a base laboratory has recalled one of its generic drug 2005 and terfenadin is in 97 after 13 years it was recalled because it was causing cardiac arrhythmia phenyl propanolamine was recalled after 60 years in the market see very long period up to 60 years without knowing its side effects people were consumed till several billions of dollars they have spent in purchasing this because it was causing cardiac events and stroke people were not knowing it so how many people have died of cardiac events and stroke nobody knows so that is this is these are the reasons why people are not interested much in the allopathic medicine mipe fraudil is it was recalled by 1998 just after one year in the market so you find you in the as a medicinal chemist you may be preparing some molecules you may be doing some pharmacology that is the end of it it won't see the market why do why we have to do why you have to spend so much why you have to spend so much of time on it because it it may in our in the indian history so many pharmacy colleges are there so many molecules several lakhs of molecules have been found out in the in these laboratories have been prepared in these laboratories but what was the use has any one of them is in the market today answer is no then why you have to spend so much of time unnecessarily in such type of research the other factors the that could have contributed include the following see during 1957 a drug was introduced name was thalidomide in germany by seba 
it was introduced for morning sickness in pregnant ladies and in addition it has prin or other drugs for cold cough influenza headache asthma etc and these pregnant ladies took the drug for to treat these illnesses but what they delivered was the babies like this without limbs babies without limbs it is called as phocomelia birth of children without limbs eyes ears kidneys spleen appendix see see the pity of these two children a single tablet ingestion also caused malformation is in bobby with babies about 15000 such children were born they were called as thalidomide children drug rules became stringent after this incident and this mainly happened in germany you can see them today also now if you roam around germany you can you will see these babies see these babies were left in the hospitals what is the use of taking them oh, why we have to see them regularly why we have to feed them regularly what is the use so they have left them in the hospitals and went away see the, these babies see see they don't have the hands to swim see they don't he don't have hands to to paint a picture they can't play they can't write see after thalidomide lot of drugs were tested for their effects on fetus effects on genes effects on cells nowadays people are testing and it is very very difficult to make a drug now today and only way and even in drug discovery there are many ways of drug discovery among them the best method of drug discovery or finding out a drug today is the herbal drugs see amnopterin it was not known that it causes problems in the fetus lithium it was used as a drug but pregnant ladies delivered such went mental diseased babies see cow marin this is a devil child see the look of the child it affects the fetus gentamicin it gives you a long face waltrovate ugly face so these were unknown to the medical field idantoin and <coughs> see the book steroids and idantoin problems warfarin trimethylion alcohol and even smoking also causes affects the fetus so people are worried about drugs any drugs taken it may not affect us it may be affecting the next generation or the third generation also so that is the reason people don't want to use the modern medicine today and one more example i would like to give here during 1940 to 70 five million pregnant ladies five million means 50 lakh pregnant ladies received diethyl stilbestrol to prevent abortion diethyl stilbestrol is a highly potent means 200 to 400 times more active than estradiol orally active non steroidal estrogen and these pregnant ladies took diethyl stilbestrol the males born to them were having less sperm count sperm motility sperm volume sometimes babies were born without testes it is called as cryptarchism and another problem is hypospadia c all the males were having less sperm count what is their problem no they have not done anything whose problem it is who has done this to them it is their mothers to mothers who in who gave the drug doctors so to prevent abortion something he has given but it caused infertility in all the 5 million babies 5 million babies born whose whose mothers have taken diethyl stilbestrol they have they have led an infertile life throughout their life they were infertile see this is the so even one diethyl stilbestrol is also known to cause cancer of reproductive organs obesity etc so with these two examples 
the people were against were against allopathic drugs see dr carolyn dean she wrote a book death by modern medicine why modern medicine should not be prescribed the reasons lot of uh, such examples are there one of unnecessary death and suffering can be stopped by avoiding modern medicine another book by ray d strand he wrote death by prescription leading causes of death in us he says heart disease number 1 cancer number 2 third one is use of drugs fourth is stroke fifth one is accidents see third leading cause of death today in the us is the prescription drugs so the same trend will continue here also so those who take more and more drugs will die early that is the reason we will be we should avoid drugs the first cause of the more more use of herbal drugs is due to drugs because drugs are not safe they are toxic what is the second cause second cause is diseases i said see we were not our elders were not using pesticides plastics sugar maida salt with taking agents ro water that means water filter chemical preservatives flavors colors allopathic drugs tv mobile computers they were not using petrol cosmetics jersey milk jersey cow milk refined oil and chlorinated water see all these where the as the development take took place in the world all these came into existence and in almost all the houses these are there today everything is toxic people were not knowing it so since everything is toxic we will get more and more diseases they are these diseases are called as lifestyle diseases due to modern lifestyle we get diseases what are those lifestyle diseases cancer main main one diabetes obesity thyroid so many are there so these diseases people are suffering more and more now so because if they would have adhered to the olden lifestyle they wouldn't have got these diseases so that is the reason people are going back towards the olden lifestyle olden lifestyle people were using herbs so they are again going towards the herbs instead of these instead of pesticides chemical pesticides we can use herbal pesticides instead of plastics we can use glass cotton wood anything instead of sugar we can use jaggery instead of maida we can use the the, the wheat flour instead of salt with taking agents we can use sindav lavana instead of water filter raw water filter we can use direct filtration in a candle filter instead of chemical preservatives flavors colors we can use herbal instead of allopathic drugs we can use ayurvedic drugs and tv mobile computers we need to avoid wherever possible and instead of petrol we can use the bad the, the electrical operated vehicles instead of cosmetics we can use herbal cosmetics instead of jersey milk we can use the the jawari or naughty cow milk instead of refined oil we can use cold pressed oils instead of chlorinated water you can use rain water or well water see like that alternatives are available if we go to the alternatives definitely we will be healthy i need another one and half hour to tell what are these top problems with using these materials so why they are so toxic why we are not supposed to use them especially in children it takes lot of time so i don't want to go into details of this and i shush i just tell you in simple terms this lady is smoking and she is pregnant what is the weight of the smoke very very less not even milligrams not even milligrams what is her body weight around 50 kg so 50 kg body weight the <coughs> is more compared to the weight of the smoke so the smoke may not be affecting much on her body 
accept it. Okay. Anything you take, whether it is good or bad, whether it is healthy or toxic, anything you take, first it reaches the reproductive system. First it reaches the reproductive system. So her smoke is reaching this reproductive system, her reproductive system, fetus is there. So it enters the fetus. So what is the weight of the fetus? Weight of the fetus is less compared to her body weight. So that means the harm for the fetus will be more. It is the second generation. So what a fetus do? What fetus? It, it's, it transfers the smoke to its reproductive system. That is nature, natural law. So the reproductive cells are growing in the fetus. So that are the third generation. These reproductive cells, weight of these reproductive cells is very, very, very small less compared to the smoke weight. So these reproductive cells will be affected and all the and they die. Reproductive cells will lose their integrity in the womb itself. So the lady will get a child. But that child will get a child? The answer is no. This is how diethyl stilvestrol acted. So the people are coming to know that the whatever toxic if we consume, it affects our fertility, it causes cancer. So because of these problems, not only in us, it will cause in the next generation also. Third generation is getting affected here, you check it. So invisibility means it is death. So only way is to avoid the toxic, that means avoid all types of chemicals. What chemicals do? Body is natural. It tries to avoid chemical entrance. Try to remove them from the system. Your body will always be trying to send them, send the chemicals out. So in this process, body suffers. Body suffering is unknowing to us. And suffering results in disease and reduced lifespan. Today, nobody is living 120 years. Man has to live 120 years, his lifespan is 120. Whereas we are not living. The reason is due to the effect of chemicals on our body. Do all chemicals have same effect? Yes. Oh, yes. If all the chemicals which are produced in the laboratories have the same effect. Though the people have studied, see for example, citric acid. Citric acid, it may be present in the lemon. So the citric acid from lemon is different from the citric acid in the laboratory. Though the instrument says it is 100% pure, but it is different. Micron size or nano size impurities will be there. And in the nanogram level or microgram level, the impurities may be present in that citric acid. So it is different. It is harmful to us, though it is same as herbs. So this matter we need to understand. We should avoid all the chemicals. That is the reason. If somebody is preparing citric acid from the lemon and export it, it, it costs 20 times more compared to the citric acid which is prepared synthetically in the laboratory. See the difference. Why people are paying 20 times more? The reason is it came from the natural source natural way without using any chemicals they have prepared. So that is the reason it is costly. So world is going towards that. See, because since we are using large, lots and lots of chemicals, a, a woman wears 515 chemicals on the average day. They look like this, lot of cosmetics are shown here. So you may be wearing so many chemicals, so that means you are inhaling these chemicals also, better to avoid them, they cause especially breast cancer, the main cause is cosmetics, so breast cancer is number one cancer in India, so better please avoid all types of chemicals. See UK breast milk is full of chemicals, how many chemicals, 350 chemicals and 87 are dioxin or dioxin-like substances. See, your breast milk is also poisoned due to the use of chemicals. 
So best way is to avoid. I have, I have, I have, I have listed. I have shown you the list earlier. All those try to avoid. And if time permits, again I can, I can deliver the importance of using natural. Or what? Why those chemicals are causing diseases? What diseases we get? All those things. See, it is. So I'm sorry. It is in Canada. This boy is only nine months old, and he has cancer, liver cancer. It is the boy is 16 months old, but the cancer appeared during his nine months age. So that means who gave him cancer? The mother's milk gave him cancer. So the carcinogens he has got as a gift from the mother. So he may die of cancer. So this condition should not come to our children. So we should see these two boys are suffering from bone marrow problems. They don't have the blood cells. So somebody has to give bone marrow to them. See this boy is having hole in the heart, and he need operation. He need money. The parents need money. How these type of children are? Ooh, born today the reason is chemicals so see these two do no hand for the child like it is born in karnataka again it is due to the problem is due to the chemicals heavy use of chemicals we should always avoid any type of chemicals entering into our body see this boy is 236 grams weight See only two thirty-six grams. He should wear. He should weigh at least three to four kg. No, two thirty-six grams. The reason is again chemicals. As a mother, she consumes lots and lots of chemicals. They affect the growth of the fetus. And after the birth, it has undergone open heart surgery. How long it may live? Hardly around ten, fifteen years. That's all. So what for? We have to live. If we are going to produce such children, this a 23 months old girl with premature breast development, it is called as talarche. So the breast development starts at the age of six months, not at the age of 15 years. Six months. The reason is heavy use of plastics, jersey cow milk, and bakery items by the mother. And even the children, child. So this girl may survive, may may get maturity at the age of five years. She may get breast cancer or uterus cancer at the age of twenty. If she married, she may not get children. So these are the problems with the present day generation. So they are. This is all due to the ignorance of the parents. See the diaper use. Diaper use may be allergic to the child, but not only that, it may cause infertility. I don't want to take more of your time in explaining how it causes, how it is causes, but it is also a reason for infertility. So why I am showing you this picture? Anything modern which is dangerous, anything modern which is dangerous to our, uh, not only our ourselves. to the next generation also so due to the lifestyle diseases people don't have other options other than going naturals see today you may be in the chemistry laboratories or in even in pharmacy laboratories you may be using chloroform dichloromethane benzene toluene tetra uh, carbon tetrachloride but all of them have been almost banned today and if you prepare an extract in these solvents that nobody may take that extract so what is permitted is only water or ethanol extracts if you ask somebody who is exporting any extracts to other countries he may be using only water or ethanol because other extracts nobody purchase because they may cause cancer similarly <coughs> caffeine we we take tea or coffee the caffeine is people it was in a tea or coffee people don't want caffeine so decaffeinated decaffeinated tea or coffee people want it 
people what they will do is they were using chloroform to decaffeinate but people don't want to use chloroform if any of you find out a way to remove caffeine from the coffee without using any of these organic solvents you have to use only water or ethanol then you will become a multi millionaire within a day It's because people want that that technology now today nobody is having that technology so i am giving you some project work also to try in your laboratories so what to do finally what to do how to how to progress one thing is first suggestion is protect project protect the knowledge of our ancient herbal medicine collect data from old literatures old people respect them help them collect all the knowledge from them indians sold ancient literature to the west by getting equal weight of gold what is the use they prosper we are poor you plant more trees save environment save the endangered plants definitely ayurveda can be uplifted and more so you will live longer if you have more trees around you plan a herbal garden in your college in your home arrange workshops seminars for the propagation of herbal medicines inculcate the values of our ancient system into students purchase herbal remedies they save you and your children if we don't have belief in herbal medicines then the whole world don't believe us and finally we are the losers and promote involve in herbal medicinal promotional activities chinese doctors practice chinese medicine in philippines uk us germany everywhere whereas indian ayurvedic therapists do not practice the same in india itself it is a shame shame on us so we should not do such things we should believe in ayurveda we should promote it and you need to publish do research in the herbal medicine publish more and more this serves as a proof of our herbal remedies herbal remedies are having effect they are safe we are showing it to the world only by research whole world is involved in herbal drug research see earlier there were not even only few herbal drug journals were there now more than 100 journals are there a large number of magazines were started in recent years on herbal remedies patent your research this helps the economic growth of the growth of india so i said herbs 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 for everything don't go to her because if you have an accident you cannot go to an ayurveda person you should go to a allopath only for getting operated you need to go to an allopath so allopathy cannot go away from this world it will remain but it will remain as an emergency medicine for your day to day problems you need to depend on ayurveda or any alternative medicines i thank the <coughs> organizers especially alok who took lot of pains in organizing this webinar i thank the, the moga pharmacy college and the of those all of you who are listening this i thank all of you thank you very much thank you sir for sharing uh, uh, such a wonderful knowledge of herbal drugs and uh, definitely uh, all the students and researcher and those who are uh, interested to start their uh, ventures or in the herbal drug Uh, really, if they want to do something, actually, this can be. Uh, they can adopt two or three A. They can work on the three A. Three A means sir, accessibility of the herbal drug, availability of the herbal drug, and affordable of the herbal drug. So this is the key factor. When they realize on the three A, they can start their uh, things on the, and they can think how to do research and what they want to do in the herbal field. But uh, uh, I want to ask sir. the uh, questions uh, for the which i have taken uh, from the students the first question yeah. is sir uh, what is the best uh, things uh, for a beginner from where they should be start sir uh, if we they are looking uh, as a herbal trainer from where they should be start sir 
Yeah. The basically, I gave an example of drumstick. It is commonly it is commonly available everywhere. Recently, I met four persons who were not pharmacy persons. They have they are all they were all engineers. And when I asked them, "What are you doing?" They left their job. They left their job around four or five years back, and they, they all four of them have were are involved today in herbal drug sales. So I asked them what they are doing. One of them said he has 13 acres of land. 13 acres of land. He is growing drumstick, mm -hmm. only drumstick. And he collect the leaves, dry them. In eight hours, he will be drying them. And then he will be powdering, packing, and exporting. And I asked him, what is the cost of it? He said, 500 rupees per kg. I asked him, give me around 5 kg for my purpose, I said. He said, no, sir. My, I don't give in kgs. We give in tons. Not quintals, tons. Our minimum order is four ton, he said. Four ton into 500 rupees per kg. How much he may be earning, you see. And he said, last two years, I have made another 10 farmers to grow the, the, the this one, drumstick. So they will be growing drumstick, leaves will be collected by him, and he will be exporting. See the amount of money which is involved when others, he, he was not knowing what is drumstick, what is its botanical uh, source, what is its family, all those he was not knowing. And he was not knowing how to collect it, how to dry it, how to pack it, all these things we know that. In pharmacognosy we study everything. but. We were not involved in it. So if you search, you first identify the plants around you or in your city. This is the first thing. Secondly, you go to the websites and check whether any of those plants are having commercial value. If commercial value is there for any of those plants, then you start collecting them. Collecting them and try to sell them. And meanwhile, you contact persons, you attend some herbal exhibitions. Exhibitions will be there, their people will be coming, they will be looking after somebody who, who can send these raw materials to them. So if you meet them, you can meet them in, in your WhatsApp groups, Facebook and also that. There are many groups in the oh, Facebook or for regarding herbal drug sales only, it will be, they will be uh, discussing. So, for example, I need Ashwagandha. If anybody supplies to at a lower price, I want to purchase that. It may be a student. So, I don't mind purchasing it if you want, when it is a good quality. So, like that, people will be, well, once they, you are in contact, definitely it grows. Basically, you, you need to make up your mind that I want to become an entrepreneur and want to be in this field and definitely god will show you a way yeah next question right sir okay definitely sir so i i think the organic farming is a, a new potential and new lead for the yeah. Uh, yeah. Beginners. they can think and they can do the cultivation of the herbs uh, yeah. herbal basically right? yeah yeah right, sir, the second question uh, someone has asked me uh, the herbal formulation basically so yeah. in which product they should focus and what should what type of the product they should uh, prepare and formulate for the market uh, point of view so please uh, guide us yeah the i became an entrepreneur after resigning from my principal siddhiganga pharmacy college eight years back i resigned and i became an entrepreneur the how i started i tell you i don't want to use any of the chemicals though even though they are preservatives flavors colors also 
in small quantities also i don't want to use them so that means the liquids i cannot sell in the form of liquids because it will get uh, attack fungal attack bacterial attack without any any preservatives they you cannot sell them so i started <coughs> powders only i started selling powder form once it is dried properly it can stay nearly 2 years and you need to formulate in such a way that it won't get spoiled you need to find out herbal preservatives herbal flavors herbal colors you need to do some research if you ask me i may not tell you because it is the secret so unless if you work hard you may not get such a knowledge so initially whatever good it may be a good food prepared in your house also it may be a good food prepared in your house also mm -hmm. try to sell it try to sell pickles like something like that enter into the food industry first later okay. on the herbal drug industry or cosmetic industry is also better one okay yeah yeah okay sir of course as we know in the allopathic drug the people they call that the, the, all the chemicals may be harmful so same thing can be say that the herbal drug is 100% uh, safe sir. you know 100% it is not safe there are many herbs which are more toxic so ayurveda people they used to do some preparation some for example ashing is one of the methods to avoid the toxicity so we need to do some deep research into that aspect and initially the best way is initially the best way is to those herbs which we are commonly using in our kitchen okay ha uh, we need to see them and the then we can formulate in a better way right sir okay uh, sir uh, the participant can send the question on the youtube link and then we will uh, give the answer to mail or participant yeah. and uh, so we are going to close the session and participant you can send the questions thank you very much for yeah. giving your patient time sir yeah. thank okay, you very okay. much thank you right thank you. Thank you. okay sir